Boxer, boxer, baby. champs and I'm out on the R1250 GS and remember I made a video about this bike and I said there's something wrong with this bike and I bought it. Well there's something wrong with the 1300 GS actually there's a quite a few things wrong with it and it's actually an epic bike. So why did this review take so long and that's because I wanted to test multiple units of these and I wanted to test with a pillion and there's a big difference between riding solo and riding with a pillion. And also, what happened was, this bike here leaked. The shaft leaked. I'm not even joking, the shaft. Well, the shaft's on the other side, but you know what I mean, the shaft actually leaked. My shaft's actually a little bit leaky. And if you don't know, go see Carl's YouTube channel from This Is The Way It Is. He will tell you in depth that every 1250 GS owner gets a free shaft replacement at 60,000 kilometers. Free shaft replacement. With this GS here, you have to replace the shaft at 80,000 kilometers and you have to pay for it, okay? Now, who doesn't want a new shaft? You get bored of the same shaft all the time, don't you, camera lady? No, is that because mine's big? Oh, ha, ha! So the good news is, GS boys, guess what? The 1300 GS shaft is bigger, it's longer, it's thicker. Now, is that more impressive to have the bigger, longer shaft? Oh, there you go. The camera lady said it. Now, I've been given the green light to buy the 1300 GS, and you know what that means? You just buy it, right? Or do you? Well, that means I put it under a fine tooth comb. Then there is the big deal the issues all the fucking issues i kid you not i've got four page document a four page document with all the fucking issues people have reported on this 1300 gs and uh subscribe for that now this baby here is the triple black edition and it has everything the ride height sports brakes everything possible the electronic screen all the luggage central locking luggage center stand and guess what 237 kilos, my fucking ass, no way. 261 kilos with all that stuff on it. They were proud of its um, lack of weight. We put it on the scales. Mm. The, the weight figure they give is a Billy Basic bike. The ones we had, which I think the one you rode, the Tramontana yeah. Option 719, weighs 261 kilos in real life. Right, fully fueled. Fully fueled, so still a heavy bike. This is why I made this YouTube channel and to get a quote from Jose Mourinho, yes, the special one, one lie told many times is still a fucking lie. So this is why I made this channel because everybody was saying 237 kilos. They just read, you know, the reviewer's guide. You have the same cookie cutter reviewers, same propaganda reviews, and I'm just sick of it. So I promise you right now, I will go into the minutia of all these products and when there's stuff to praise, I will praise the hell out of it. There's a lot to praise about this bike, but they fucked a lot of things up as well. And you need to listen to the stuff they fucked up on this bike, as well as all the awesome things. Let's talk about the awesome things. This is easier for the pillion to get on. It's easier for a smaller person to handle. The lady friend has got on this bike and she has said that this is just as easy to handle as a 310 GS, all right? 310 GS, so that is remarkable. So they're trying to pitch this at Gen X, so they're pitching this stuff at me because I've already shown in videos before, you know, that the Gen X, they're more interested in the Multistrada, the Boomers, they're more interested in the GS. And guess what? The Boomers are retiring, so they've got to move on. They've got to make this more accessible, smaller, all are because you know people are intimidated by the 1250 but this one is not intimidated so that is awesome that you know smaller riders people that are intimidated by the 1250 GS can get on this with no problems good job with me on it it looks fucking awesome with you fat boomer boy on it it ain't gonna look that good now this thing actually handles like a beast the handling on this is out of this world it feels more dynamic it feels more sporty a lot of that is throttle map it's not that much faster than the 1250 to be honest and I have the Rally X version of the 1250 which has a sharper throttle map so the reality is it feels a lot more sportier and faster but 
In reality, you've seen videos with Chopsy, you know, having drag races. It's not that much faster. You can feel that it's sharper on the throttle, and that's not good for a passenger, by the way, but we'll get to the bad stuff later. But what they've done is they've allowed more wheelie, it just feels more dynamic. And 80% of that is just the throttle, and you know, 10% of that is, or 20% of that is actually, it is more powerful, this unit. It's good that it has all the tech now, so it's up to date with all the tech. You know, this is actually really good, this screen. It actually protects you really well, so I'm happy with that. So there are a lot of awesome things about this bike, and this can actually replace the R and the RS. Yes, this can replace it. So get this. This is a better sports bike than the R and the RS, okay? So if you're thinking of getting one of those, the 1250 R and RS, just get this. Because this is much sportier, it's much more dynamic, feels a lot faster. Yeah, this thing is a sporty tour de force. And it's sort of like a sporty touring bike now. But is it the big daddy, the big coach, the big touring thing that we know all GSs are, the 1250 GSs that we're talking about here? <laughs> So here's the deal, whether you like it or not, the GS is the most important, when we're talking about the big GS of course, is the most important bike in the industry, okay? It is the bike that every other bike is measured against. It is the biggest selling big bike in the world. Is there actually a better bike than the GOAT here? Well, that's a discussion for another video. Now, to give you an idea of how successful this bike is, think about this. The Ducati Multistrada sells around 10,000 units a year. On the last figures we got from Honda, they sell about 24,000 Africa Twins. How many GSs do you reckon sell? Well, it's over 60,000. Yes, you heard right, they sell over 60,000 of these a year. Now, the big thing is, they've sold nearly as many 1,300 GSs as Multistratas are gonna sell in this year already. Now the new 1300 GS is a revolution. It has taken things to another level in so many areas. It has redefined what a big adventure bike is. But has it actually gone in the wrong direction? Are we witnessing the fall of Rome here? Or are they gonna set saw into the sky and take adventure bikes, big adventure bikes to another level? It's hard when you're up the top to go to another level, but have they actually done that? Or have they made it worse? Now, all of this is gonna make perfect sense when the 1300 GS Adventure comes out. That's gonna be a big boy. And if you don't know what the 13 or 1400 GS Adventure is gonna be like, it's gonna be a different bike to the 1300 GS. It's gonna be bigger, it's codenamed the Rhino. It's a completely different bike, it's not just the same bike with you know taller suspension it's gonna be big so the 1300 gs being a little bit small for a big you know adventure bike that will make sense once that comes out and i do believe that a lot of 1300 gs owners will regret buying that now when it comes to the 1300 gs versus the 1250 gs which one looks better well guess what i'll tell you which one looks better the one that you think looks better what the fuck are people arguing about opinions for but listen to this there is definitely an objective difference between a 1300 gs and this 1250. this you can see is made by a man you know the trellis frame the weld you can see bolts there's hoses hanging out you can see it's been manufactured and where it's been put together and how it's been put together that's what you get with this 1250 gs now with the 1300 GS, it looks fucking cool if you ask me. I gotta say, I make it look good. They should hire me as a model. I gotta tell you, fat boomer boy, you ain't gonna look this fucking good on a GS. But what I can say is that the 1300 GS looks like an appliance put together by a robot, right? You cannot see how it's put together. You can't see the welds, the bolts and all that sort of stuff. And which one you prefer is up to fucking you. It's great to have nonetheless, but I think it might be to the detriment of the the existing consumer uh, and I don't know if that's what people actually ask mm. for in the GS. So let's sum it up compared to the 1250. If you are a current 1250 owner, where does the 1300 fit in? Is it worth getting? You sink into it, all the bodywork wraps around you, it's smooth, the engine is more mellow on the old one, it feels nicer. Yeah, it's more live, I think it's like, uh, anyway. I think I said, on paper the new one's better, but in real life the experience it gives you. I think the old one is still brilliant. Here's a question though. Would, if they're the same price, which one would you buy? I think the old one, if I could have the electric, electric screen off the new one, and yeah. if I could maybe have the adaptive cruise control. I wasn't a fan of that to begin with. But when you ride a lot with it, mm. it does make life easier. Yeah. 
But they're the only two things, the two little toys it's got. Yeah, the, the bike itself, I think I probably still have the old one. And it looks substantial, doesn't it? It looks like a big Tonka toy. It just, yeah. I feel my current 1250 is a bit smoother mm. and generally just a rounded, softer bike. If you do get a good 1300 and you bought it for the right reasons because you want something more sporty and, you know, you want something easier to handle than this and you get a good one, you're going to fucking love that bike. Has it set a new benchmark? Yeah, well, it has. It has set a new benchmark. Is it the right direction of what we want? What normal GS owners want? <sighs> I don't know. If I was going to go on a long distance ride, I would take this every day, every day. If I was going on some sporty ride, it's only an hour or two, I would take the 1300. But if I'm actually going to carry a pillion or carry anything on the bike at actual weight, I'm taking this every day. The leg room, the arm room, it's just more imperious to ride. It's got a better presence. The ergonomics are better, They're much better. You know, the ambience of it, it's just, a beast and the 1300 is a great bike in isolation what a sporty tour de force and it's sports touring to me that bike but if that's what you want sports touring yeah go and get that 1300 gs but if you love the big beast you can handle this big beast you like something with a bit more presence something that's not a toy gs compared to this all right maybe they have redefined what the big gs is now right but compared to this the 1300 gs is a toy it feels like a toy gs but again that may be the new definition of what a big adventure bike is according to bmw but if you enjoy this big bike you know big presence it's a little bit heavier it's a bit harder to manage it is but it's more of a challenge to ride and i like that about this thing have a look at the leg room i have compared to the 1300 it's not even the same mate and when i stand up my head is not over here like on the 1300 i stand up here still maybe for my height i would like a little bit more room but certainly the 1300, the room is a lot more cramped when I stand up. And uh, yeah, when it comes to the passenger, the passenger likes how easy it is to get on the 1300. They like that. It actually has the room. My pillion said there's room there. There's plenty of room there. But she said, well, it was nothing special. It didn't float her boat like this thing here, the big cruiser. And if you want to know what she said, this is like business class, okay? The 1300 is like premium economy. So there's a bit of difference there in comfort. And certainly for me, for long distance touring, the extra room I got here, the extra room I got there, sort of a little bit cruiser-like compared to the more sporty-like 1300. The 1300 is an awesome bike in isolation, but compared to this, it really just depends on what you want. But let's talk about all the fucked up things on the 1300, and there are plenty. I've got like four pages, and New stuff keeps on getting added every single fucking day. And some people have said, are BMW actually trying to fucking kill you? Well, let's discuss that. Uh, GS owners always love their shaft. Well, the shaft was leaking on the 1300 I rode, right? If getting oil on your back wheel and on your back brake, that is a recipe to fucking throw you off the bike, right? So if you are a 1300 owner, check every time you ride for leaks in the back shaft, okay? I cannot believe we're even talking about the shaft again. Some issues on a BMW, a bike they've been building the shaft for how fucking long? Come on. Another thing that might kill you is, there was a guy online, he was actually overtaking a car on the 1300 GS, and whoa, he went to overtake, and boom, the power just cut. It just cut when he was trying to fucking overtake. Can you imagine how scary that is when you're trying to overtake, the power just gets cut? That is just fucking nuts. The collision warning system actually thought the car that the bike was trying to overtake was actually going to be in a collision, and it just cut the power just fucking nuts then there's a freaking switch gear come on first of all there's the faff they've taken away the heated grips button and they've taken away the shortcut for the suspension so if you want to you know minimum preload or change the different suspension settings you used to have a button a shortcut for that so let me get this straight now for things that i want to use all the time i've got a faff about with this stupid fucking action button to get things done in fact, I would not be buying an electronic screen because that would fucking annoy me that I can't just turn on the heated grips or just go to the shortcut button for the suspension or the preload. It's just fucking insanity. Faffing about with sub menus and action buttons, that is an accident waiting to happen. You're going to be sitting there, oh, fucking what the fuck am I doing? Fuck 
that. They fucked up with that one. And I've actually got to say, I'm not blaming the bloke that come up with the idea and said, oh, let's try and, you know, integrate all these buttons into one fucking action button. You know, stupid thing they're doing with the fucking iPhone now too. I'm not blaming that bloke. I'm blaming the bloke that thought, oh, yeah, listen to that. And it was the project manager or whatever the fuck, whoever's in charge of this shit and said, oh, that's a fucking good idea. Why don't we do that? There's nothing more people want to do is faff about with fucking submenus to get shit done that used to only take one button press. And then there's the fact that it's not illuminated. So if you're riding at night and uh, you're not using a button you're familiar with, you're going to be faffing about, boom, crash, opera. That's what's going to fucking happen with all these things. Are they trying to kill you? Just let me know. The next video is going to be all the fucking issues with the 1300. And I have a four page document of all the reported issues. And I have to fucking add new issues, it seems like, on a weekly basis. So make sure you do subscribe for that. You need to know about these issues if you're thinking of buying a 1300. So let me tell you the story of the piece of junk 1300 GS I rode this weekend. Yeah piece of junk it was actually a bucket of rusty bolts like it was that bad the engine was rough as guts rattly it idled funny it was just rough idling the gearbox is whining the gearbox was fucked i was hitting neutral all the time just wouldn't go into gear sometimes and this isn't just an issue that i've had and i had a few missed gears actually between fourth and fifth yeah. at the launch and and here in my due diligence i've come across quite a few gearbox issues now this is the thing right the first 1300 i rode was absolutely smooth as silk apart from the gearbox when it would leap you into another postcode that's just these fucking gs gearboxes they're fuck and that's one thing by the way the gearbox is improved but it will still leap you into another postcode okay and it's got a disconnected feeling to the gearbox too it feels just notchy and weird part of our test was with the pillion and there's still that big gap between first and second it's really hard to be smooth with yeah, yeah, really. It's, it's such a. That's a funny thing. Yeah, it's, that's something you never. And if you, unless you've ridden with a pillion, yeah, you're, they don't know when you're going to shift. Yeah. So you have to do this. Yeah, like, oh, hang yeah, on, yeah. hang on. I don't think it's a great deal better than this one. I was really hoping I would have fixed that gearbox, but it's still fucked. Unless you like to be ejected into another postcode when you change gears every now and then. It's not always like that. It's just every now and then. Whoa, jumpy. So getting back to the other 1300s I've ridden. Smooth as silk apart from that gearbox. Really nice. The one I rode on the weekend was a bucket of bolts, a bucket of rusty bolts. It was really bad. And I'll tell you now, if I got that 1300 GS, I'll be fucking mighty pissed. And how do you fix it, right? How do you fix it? How do you say, oh, well, you know, the gearbox is playing up and all this. What are they going to do? Replace the fucking gearbox? I mean, BMW do look after you, but what? Is it a new bike if they pull out the fucking gearbox and start messing about? And these people don't do this all the time. Is it going to be the same as a nice, beautifully made, factory fresh model? Is it going to be that good? Probably not, right? So if you do get a good 1300 and you bought it for the right reasons, because you want something more sporty and, you know, you want something easier to handle than this, and you get a good one, you're going to fucking love that bike. With the issues at the moment, oh... I've said I've got the green light to get it. I really want it, sort of, but I think I'd be stupid to get rid of this. I think this is the GOAT, and I actually will concede that I actually think the GOAT of GOATs is probably the 1200 air cool. Probably the best one. But I mean, any of the 1200s, 1250s, best bikes, best bikes in the world probably, still. I don't think the 1300 has got better than this. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Tally ho.